that up. Fasten your seat belts and hang on. Mr. G, it's Wacky Mr. G's show. It's Wacky Mr. G's show. Coming to you every Thursday. Hey, Mr. G, you're riding in the back of a car. You're crazy. You're environmental. Hey, kids, hey, save guys, sweetheart. Woo. I need that. Oh. Not easy being a celebrity. It's not easy being a celebrity, but we we persevere because we care. Every beginning is an ending. And every ending is a new beginning. And, you know, somewhere in between, you just get stuck in all this bullshit. Hello and welcome to Ragnaroks. Well, hello. Oh, and there it is. Wow, wow. You guys are on the start. This is Star Wars, and this is the this is the X-wing fight yeah. right here. <laughs> wow. We're standing under it, and like you guys are getting ready to go get stormtroopers because this is the yeah. snow. We're actually though no, we're 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 just getting ready to to have a go go have a drink because we just finished juicing the thing up and it's flying away, so we get to go have a drink. Hey, how's it going? Hello. And welcome to uh, whatever this is, Ragnarok. Ragnarok, that's right. Yeah. I'll mix a drink in a minute. Sure. We'll okay. just ease on into this. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm here with you and our cat Vera, who's probably like all over my microphone now. <laughs> We're so good at this now. See, we haven't done this in about two years. Um, we haven't actually sat down in front of a camera and just talk to you, the home viewer, or ourselves, or anybody, really. Our camera was kind of broken for a while, but now it's not. And so we're glad to be back with you. Of course, a lot of people think, have always thought that the videos that we make are, are live, that we're actually like, you know, the minute you're watching this, it's, it's being made in some studio somewhere. Well, I mean, this isn't a studio. It's, this program is edited together. He does all that work. I just kind of sit around and mix drinks, like I'm about to do. So check this out. Okay, so I guess to, uh, to start out, we're going to start with the, um, the primordial mixed drink, as it were, the fig leaf, which of course is uh, relevant because, of course, Adam and Eve, you know, um, had this fig leaf thing going on. They, they wore fig leaves. I'm going to mix a drink, though, as I mentioned before. Two pieces of ice, which I have here in this insulated Student Environmental Action Coalition mug, which I thought would be appropriate because we're environmentalists. And we are students in of, the school of life. Yeah, in the school of life, as it were. Um, I have here some Noily Pratt uh, brand sweet vermouth. 
it's a, regist a registered trademark that they have there on that Noily Pratt, which, you know, it's a good thing because if they didn't register that trademark, somebody else would probably take that name, and that would suck. An ounce of this stuff, sweet vermouth, um, as you can tell, I have a very scientific method of, of pouring. Um, it's an ounce? Yeah. Usually, you know, an ounce is, is measured out in, a, in some kind of preordained way, but I prefer a more holistic approach whereby, you know, I just pour the amount that I want. The next thing that we want to add is some rum here, which I have a... See, we have so many bottles of alcohol for this program that we even have to have a little side stash over there. This rum, incidentally, is Ron Castillo, which, um, which is a fine rum, at least as far as $7.99 750 milliliter bottles go. How much? Uh, about an ounce, so, you know, equal parts. Oh, wow, look at that. You know, this, this is what you get for $7.99. You get a bottle cap that, when you screw it on for the first time, it, uh, it you know, pops wow. off. So. Not, uh, oh, there we yeah. go. Okay, well, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing we want to add is some lime juice. I have a lime here in my pocket. I always carry one in case, in case of time of need. I want to cut this in half with this piece of shit knife that I have here. Wow. Um, yeah. These techniques that I use are, are now, stunning. What brand here. of lime is that? This is, uh, does it have a brand? It doesn't have a brand. It's, it's nature made, God given, and very, very green. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to squeeze half of the lime, or the juice of half of the lime, into this glass here. Fascinating. Yeah, if you get close enough there, you'll probably like get splashed, which, you know, tends to happen. Um, so this looks like. It's not working. Well, it is. <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. It looks like some kind of um, alien creature. Oh, you know what it looks like? It looks like those little characters in the so it was a soft scrub. The scrubbing bubbles. The scrubbing bubbles, guys. Yeah. Now, this is uh, Angostura bitters, the classic bitters. Um, you can always tell the Angostura bitters from the other ones because these people still, after like 150 years, haven't figured out how to make the label the right size for the bottle. So, you know, a couple of dashes there of bitters. A couple of dashes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This is what is this drink? A fig leaf. Um, it's in honor of, of our good and great friends Adam and Eve, the, uh, the, the original humans, if you believe that particular creation myth. We're delving into the past here. Um, we're, we're looking at the origins of humanity. What we have here is a little piece of lemon peel, um, which, uh, you know, you just want to kind of... Um, Kind of rub it around in your fingers like this so that it gets all moist. And then just drop it in there. Um, and then stir it around, shaken, not stirred. And uh, taste. Wow. It has this way of like, it, uh, it, it's bitter and yet sour and um, sweet all at once. Kind of like life, really. small little mixed drink there. Yeah, yeah. So a I'll small probably little make another one pretty soon. Yeah. So it, uh, while you're sipping this, as you should be, because of course you're mixing the drinks along with us, right? You got that part right. Well, um, you should watch this. And, pen and a pencil that have been run over here in this parking lot. I believe this is a clue. This pen is a red pen 
and red, of course, is what you what is the mark of the devil. This is a, a wooden pencil, actually, that's, that's been crushed. Clearly, we have evidence of some kind of shenanigans here. We are acting as vid vid vigilante vid vid videographers um, in our little uh, effort here to to uh, catch the. Uh, the these people Joe Scheidler this guy who's supposedly coming here and, and talking about uh, abortion here at, at uh, Planned Parenthood we're gonna talk to him and see what he has to say um, we're gonna catch him um, unawares though he didn't he didn't any, didn't have any idea that the J and Beyond the Rocks vid vid vigilante vid vid videographer troop would be on their tails Joe uh, explained to me Jay. what was going on here we're not sure if this guy's actually gonna show there could be one of five possibilities you know there's either a, it was at 7 in the morning, uh, B, they're going to blow up the place, we're going to be charred remains or something, or, or C, uh, it's at 8 o'clock, or actually, you know, maybe we're just, maybe they're just late. Yeah, we and don't know. D is, is uh, none of the above, and E is all of the above, so yeah. that's the five possibilities. So that's the five possibilities. And, of course, um, all of the above isn't really a possibility, because it would include none of the above, and that's a, that's kind of a... Uh, contradiction. Yeah, so what he said. So Jay, um, yeah. what do you think the explosion radius is? The explosion radius, like if there's a bomb there? Yeah. Um, well, what I'm thinking is that it'll, it'll probably get me, I'll probably get like some shrapnel and probably be injured or killed if there's an explosion in the building, which is right over there. Um, So you're drinking coffee, I see. Yes, I am. Is mm. it good? Yes. Well, I mean, it's okay. Yeah. You know, brewed up right here in your own home. Yeah. You want to try this fig leaf? No, thanks. I don't want your drink. All right. Well, it just means more for me. Um, you know, I, I used a big glass, of course, because I'm a big guy. I just didn't fill it because um, I have a lot more drinks to mix. Yeah, I remember back in the old days, we used to share all our mixed drinks. It's a big foot you've got there. Um, yeah, so, so what's up with that? I don't know, but speaking of the old days. We have no idea what's about to happen. I think we should all think more about like recycling. They're just high on gas. I think we're probably gonna get high on gas because if anyone farts in this car with all the windows rolled up. Most ecologists say it's a good idea. I think we should all think more about like Recycling. We're going on to on a crusade to have Smokey the Bear slaughtered and uh, and stuffed and put in our be our living room. Are you confused? I don't know. But speaking of the old days, um, weren't we gonna gonna try to begin at the beginning to really understand? Sure. What's going on here? Yeah. At the very beginning. The very beginning. The cosmic origin. Yeah. Well, depending on on who you ask, of course, that would be the Big Bang, which is. Yeah. Um, you know, basically an explosion, right? Sci supposedly scientific sure. explanation of... There's a number of different explanations of how this place came to be, and that would be the scientific one. Uh, of course, they all have this problem of, you know, well, uh, at first there was, like, nothing, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then there was something. Right. And so how did this something come out of this nothing? And, you know, even, yeah. even the Big Bang, uh, you know, it's just... It's it really, assumes a lot. It's really hard to understand how how something that, like, uh, the idea of this singularity, mm -hmm. right, you know, the, uh, uh, there's no, it has a, what, no... Uh, Noah? No dimensions, oh. no, uh, there's no time. Yeah, it's it... Real anything, everything is, uh, everything is nothing, and, and then all of a sudden, although there's nothing there, kaboom! But what... Yeah causes the the boom, right? Doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, and no matter where you really... I think it was Hall & Oates, actually. Big Bam Boom. Yeah, yeah. my right. favorite album when I was in high school. You know, I was convinced that if I just listened to that enough times, it would make me popular. I saw that tour. Wow. Hey, it's Vera. Uh, There's her but, butthole. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's going on? Well, Terry and I were just hanging out here having some salsa mm -hmm. and everything, when uh, I took off my hat, <laughs> and Jay said, Jay, who's working the camera, yeah. said, man, you guys are the biggest freaks in the world. You deserve some kind of award. And there it is, man. This is our award. Thank you. Thank Yay. you, everybody. Thank you so much.
Ray for the award. Congrats on your new award, man. Yeah, thank you. Men. Wow. Yeah, what happened to your hair? Well, I kept some. Of, I kept a hold of some of it. Now, what does your wife think of all of this? Uh, it took her about five seconds to decide whether or not she liked it. And what did she decide? She decided she did. Oh, good. <laughs> Support of the family. Support of the family. Real family values here. She said the reason that she loved me was because if I was a Chinese dish, I would be velvet chicken. And I said, Man, if you were a Chinese dish, you'd be sweet and sour pork. <laughs> Sweet sometimes, sour other times, but pork through and through. Kind of makes a feller sit back and think. I just don't know. It's like the Great Pyramids, except, well, it's just a signpost yeah, of yeah. the times. It's much smaller and made of wood. Yeah, kind of like my head. <laughs> Ice storm tonight here in Bloomington. Oh. Here you are, old boy. You say what you want to say. Too many of our schools have become pockets of atheism, pockets of materialism, and secular humanism. We need the power of God. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ to penetrate these walls with our young people being subjected to dope and dope peddlers and being subjected to drinking and illicit sex and abortion and immorality and cussing and swearing and smoking. Oh, how much our young people need the, need word, of the word of God. They, they need, need to, to pray to God. God. Too many of our, schools, many of our schools have become pockets of atheism, pockets of materialism, pockets of materialism and, secular and secular humanism. humanism. We, need, we the need the power of God. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ to penetrate these walls with our young people, with our young people being subjected to dope and dope peddlers and being subjected to drinking and illicit sex and abortion and immorality and cussing and swearing and smoking. Oh, how much our young people need the word of God. They need to pray to God. Oh, how much our young people need the Word of God. They need to pray to God. Hey. you subscribe to, be it the scientific uh, explanation, the Christian explanation, uh, the uh, explanations from different mythologies around the world or whatnot, they all have the same problem. I mean, if you say that God created the world, and before, you know, there, first there was nothing, there was just God, mm -hmm. and then he created the world. But, but where did God come from? Well, I think the assumption is that he was always there, but then if he was always there, then there wasn't nothing. Ever. Right, right. And you know, then, he's probably bored for a long, long time. And, and what could motivate God to all of a sudden decide, okay, I'm going to create a world when there's absolutely nothing in existence? Yeah. Maybe he just ran out of pot and so... Why would God create something anyway if God is perfect? Exactly. Most creative people, most artists and so forth, I mean, they're, they're kind of fucked up people, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they've got, you know, they, t they tend to have some, some serious personal problems. For God then to be the creator, God must be the, the, the primordial artist. So he probably like made things like this. J and B, Christy Paxson, and all these people. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Miss Paxson, can you come up? I can't come out of the Hoosier house. I've been in so long. Coffee out there make me want to puke. And I can make a new thing that I'd rather do. I'd rather run than I want to go. And have a place to go. I'm going to shriek out. I hate those coffee and I hate those people too. And I can make a new thing that I'd rather do. I'd rather run than I want to go. And have a place to go. Yeah.
torture scene is just this got me a question and something though you know why is it that we pay you know this dollar a trash bag thing when this is a perfectly good place right here yeah Look. you can just throw your stuff in the in the creek and it'll go away yeah i mean no one has to know about it so we've come out here to cedar cedar bluff outside of bloomington um because it's such a beautiful day and you know uh we're rebel we're all taking the day off we've decided to say fuck it to our jobs and uh, drink some beer on Cedar Bluff because you know it's important to have daily acts of rebellion in your life. Well, actually, today's Saturday and I don't work on Saturday, so. And Joe doesn't have a yeah, job. Yeah, I don't have so, a job actually. I'm unemployed. So, but I'm rebelling against rebel, my unemployment. What rebels we all are. Yeah, yeah. It's what we feel in our hearts. It's what's inside yeah. the council. Yeah. Preparing for the duel. We're preparing for the duel. We have to do all philosophical issues. Oh, yeah. Well, I think what we should do is uh, do. Hang on for a second. Um, no. Okay, let's think of something. Let's think of a hang on for a second. I'd like to speak to them, and then I'll speak to the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I'm just doing some creative camera work here. Don't never you mind me. Why don't we have a, a, a duel on, on political ideologies? I represent capitalism. Hmm. I represent oh, libertarianism. Libertarianism. <laughs> libertarianism. 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 Paul, what's your stance, man? Uh, slavery. Slavery. Oh! Oh, yeah. Anarcho-syndicalist? Is that what it's called? Okay. Something like that. <laughs> Virtual reality. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And Chris, what is your political ideology? Just say yes. Okay. <laughs> Capitalism over all! Ha -ha! Ah, yeah, Jesus! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Profits, not people! Wait, why am I always the one everybody's beating up on? Because I'm actually a libertarian and I want money just to... Wait, it's the same thing as capitalism! Uh -huh. hey! uh -huh. But capitalism has the biggest stick! Yeah, and I'm right. trying yeah, I'm to get a bigger now. one. <laughs> now we have yeah. three. Yeah, we're on the same team now. Capitalism and, and libertarianism are one. And wait, and th oh, yeah. three. And just say yes or something. <laughs> Boy. United. <laughs> Isn't anybody else? <laughs> United, <laughs> yes. Well, that was well, a, anyway. a failed attempt at, at a... at a Little uh, vignette. Yeah, yeah. I, I certainly uh, am not really sold on the capitalism thing myself. As a matter of fact, I'm going to break this stick um, to symbolize my hatred of, of capitalism. So, now this may be some kind of embarrassment if this is a very strong stick. Actually, though, it's a nice walking stick. Capitalism is. You know, it's just the right height. So, well, maybe I won't break it, actually. Maybe I'll just think about how bad I think capitalism is. See, it truly is a capitalist going to keep it. Yeah, Jay's keeping the capitalist stick. Yeah, why? Yeah. Because they marketed it to him. They said that everyone needs a stick. He fell for it, and look, he's got one. You Wait, bought the capitalist stick. Well. using it. What he's, if we all traded sticks? Anything. You said you found the boot. Take the boot. We it is the boot. the boot. Wow. Take the boot to the sun. It is the boot of the revolution against the man. Carry the boot 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 against the man. Carry the boot. Carry the boot. Carry the carry the. Look at this right here. This is pretty cool, I think. Oh yeah, man. Fuck the revolutionary songs. Look at this. Cedar Bluff, in fact, here in outside of Bloomington. It's on the southwest side of Bloomington. It's a really cool place to come, and it's a lovely day here in southern Indiana. So, um, we, and here we are on these rocks, actually. I was going to show you these rocks that we're, we're surrounded by here. These are, are part of the rocks that make up Cedar Bluff here in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah, lovely place. It has nothing to do, by the way, with Cedar Point, which is a capitalist endeavor um, uh, up, where is it, Fort Wayne or something like that, some kind of really wretched little uh, amusement park where a lot of uh, people make money by giving people valueless entertainment. So. And we're suckers for it, every one of us. I've been to those places plenty of times. I hate them. Yeah. 
but I still go back because it's something to do. Okay, this is the um, front part of the rock, and it, mm -hmm. it's really the profile of a face. Mm -hmm. And when you turn it, you can see it from the inside out. Wow. Yeah, I can't see that at but all, but maybe it's because... You your imagination. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a rock, shrine. a stone shrine of some sort. Mm -hmm. A stupa. Wonder what, what's the deal with it? Well, it's a collection of rocks. Someone's gathered them together mm -hmm. to um, exhibit their um, experiences. Uh-huh. Their faith in Stonehenge or something? Yeah, how they stack rocks. Yeah. Or maybe they were just trying to start a fire, but they got confused about rocks versus plant material. And wood. This one, this is the base, and it's supporting all of them. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, that's just really terrific. I'm glad somebody's taking the time to do this. What is it? It's got its own cave. It's got, this is where it, it, it secretes its waste, so I think it's pretty high on the totem because, you know, think about it. You know, most, or some beings have, you know, the, their waste inside them all the time, and this guy's smart enough to get it out. So mm -hmm. this is an intelligent life form. Yeah, yeah, intelligent ice. Yeah, it's not like that ice you get in the fridge. It's been deprogrammed. That's why they're all in little squares. Yeah, this is ice as it occurs in the natural world. It right. hasn't been uh, domesticized. Yeah, and putting those little cart. You know why they have to keep it in the little carton? Is because they'll, you know, they'll take over. Yeah, Some maintained ice by for the your media. Drink, perhaps. Oh, Thank God. you. <laughs> as I sit here in my little nature's hippie cushion or what have you, I oh my God! Look, I found a book. Oh, I see the word God. She just couldn't have him going off to search for Pete. Just me and God. A frightening tale. Let's put it down. First I saw the, these hooves. But Th these hooves? What? I didn't what? see that it was they were attached to anything. Oh my God. But I think we have the whole deer leg up to the pelvis. Wow. Past the femur and all that stuff. And we've got the rope remaining. The rope? And what the hell? Tied oh, up. it must have been some kind of bracelet that the deer was wearing it's when it died. going through the tibia right here the rope is somehow. yeah and here's the department of the woods tag this is where it all happens man sorry that's okay I was just gonna say that God probably has bigger problems than uh, than anybody then if as the greatest artist that ever has existed he's probably really fucked up and we all know that happy satisfied complete people do not make art that's true. But they don't need to make anything. Recreate the world in their own image, so to speak. Right. They have children instead. Procreate. Yeah. It's because no, when a... you have children, you're becoming a professional. Um, so actually what's happening here yeah. is that while I talk to you in front of the camera, you're kind of hearing the background noise of B going upstairs. He has his wireless microphone. See, we both have these wireless yeah. microphones on. He's going upstairs to urinate, so... Um, uh, you're getting kind of a uh, distant, it's like distance, what do they call it? Um, distant, uh, distant learning, distant vision, distant um, belching. You know, it's what those people do when they, um, do, you, do you see that I feel a little bit at a loss for words and, and ideas here because I'm alone? Um, it doesn't sound like I'm alone because, of course, you're hearing these urine screaming in the toilet. But, you know, he's not here. I'm not watching that. And you're not watching it. And you can be thankful for that. And, um, I think I'll taste my drink again. You know, it's not a bad drink. Um, I'm sure that uh, and when Adam and Eve were around, they, uh, they had very little to choose from. You know, they had their lemons and limes because, of course, they lived in a tropical clime. Um, they had a little bit of vermouth sitting around, you know, some rum. Um, and so they mixed themselves that drink. And, and, you know, I can salute them for that. The, the first mixologists, the primordial mixologists, my personal ancestors, Adam and Eve, so, um, hats off, or, uh, I'm not going to take my pants off, not yet.
but watch this. Now, it used to be that, uh, that people would often note to us uh, just how stupid and juvenile our program was. Of course, people don't dare to say anything like that about us anymore because they know we'd send someone over to take them out. Oh gosh, it's an old squash with ants all over it. Um, this person uh, obviously has, has a lot of, they care about the environment. They're composting, see here, in their front yard. Composting, yes, yes, rehashing, recycling the old shit from the, from the days of old. I think we should all think more about, like, recycling. To make something new again, and that's what we're doing. There's this Def Leppard song on the radio the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lyric to it. Mm -hmm. I think it was Pour Some Sugar On Me was the song. Uh -huh. but there was this lyric to it that went, uh -huh. Red light, headlight, green light, go! Uh-huh. And it's just been going through my head again and again. I can't get it out of my head. And it should, don't you think it should be headlight, red light, green light, go? Instead of, instead what of was it? Red light, headlight, green light, go. Yeah, it, it sure, just, sure. The logical progression there yeah. is messing me up. Well, you know you know about the logic of heavy metal. Yeah. Well, it was a two for Tuesday, and they played two Defford Lef De Def Leppard. Def Leppard songs in a row. Uh -huh. And um, both of them had that guitar riff from Photograph in it. Uh -huh. You know that, that song of theirs that was so popular? Yeah. Their, their big breakthrough song? Yeah. But neither of them was actually that song. Uh -huh. They just, they were other songs, but they had the same riff. Huh. I found that a little bit confusing. Confusing. Wow. Yeah, like so much of life, really. Yeah. If you think about it. And I never do. I always do. <laughs> God, I'm confused. Wow. The Herald Times. Yeah, it's a newspaper. Oh, here the in local our quaint little town of Bloomington, Indiana. Yeah. If you look over here, in fact, you'll see. Oh, there it is. The machine here. They've got one out in front, so you can come here to the newspaper and buy a newspaper instead of going inside and getting one for free. Um, the Sunday Herald Times, of course. Mm -hmm. used to be called the Herald Telephone, but I guess they decided that that just didn't sound like a modern enough yeah, name. Yeah, well, it's not a telephone after all, it's a newspaper. I know, but you know, the Herald Telephone had so much more character as a name. Unfortunately, I think that uh, a lot of corporate entities uh -huh. um, are not comfortable with character. They want a faceless face, Yeah, right? Yeah, they they yeah. don't want to be distinguished. They mm -hmm. want to blend in because Conformity is the hallmark of capitalist success. Yeah. I've got a question about capitalism, by the way. What's that? Well, if we have a free market uh -huh. and, and people compete in that free market, it seems like eventually, with all this competition going on in any uh -huh. one field, somebody's going to be the winner. I mean, that's the point of competing, right? Just to you win, you lose. Well, someone's going to win. Uh huh. And then they're going to have a monopoly, right? And once they've got a monopoly, they've got so much power, they can keep any other competitors from mm -hmm. doing anything. And they can also provide shoddy service for inflated prices yeah. and screw the customer. Yeah, kind of like... That seems TC inevitable. TCI. Like the TCI, cable TCI the cable channel that you're probably watching this on right now. Yeah, yeah. Unless, of course, you're on the internet. Yeah, or somewhere else. But uh, anyway, it seems like inevitably then, as a part of capitalism, um, you're going to have monopolies screwing the customer. Uh-huh. Well... How does that work? The gist of the libertarian platform, which, which claims to be the most constitutionally correct uh, CC, as it were, um, uh, uh, political stance, is that um, you should just have a completely free market, no regulation, and let the market forces take care of everything. Let the market forces, th the idea being that, that uh, everybody knows that it's bad to have monopolies, everybody knows that it's bad to close out the little guy, and therefore the market forces will just take care of it on their own. Um, well, I tend to, th that's kind of the essence of capitalism as well, uh, of, of a very uh, just open free market capitalist uh, philosophy. Well, I tend to, to have a little more um, uh, democratic, hence Democrat, um, although I don't think I really fall into that party, but nonetheless, that's the Democrat stance, is that, is that there has to be some re regulation. There has to be a, a referee out there who sets the rules, um, who says, no, you can't, you can't uh, have a monopoly, who says, no, you can't pollute the environment. Um, now, you know, the people, what, whatever, um, let's see, uh, you can't put, but, but there are monopolies. 
There are monopolies. Um, TCI is a perfect example. The cable companies have monopolies right now. Um, the, the power of, of, uh, of large corporations has never been greater in our country. Um, the power of the federal government has never been greater in, yeah, our, the, in the, our society. The government has a monopoly. The government has a monopoly. I mean, fucking A. Who, they're, they're the only people who, who uh, are allowed to deal drugs, for example. Um, and they do. Um, or something. Jesus um, Christ! What a yeah. situation. Yeah. Well, I mean, for instance, okay, look at look at uh, 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 prescription drugs. Why are prescription drugs illegal to buy over the counter? Well, because the government um, uh, feels like they have to have a hand in that. They have to they have to protect us. They have to be mommy and daddy. Um, now that is is an extension of of uh, the democratic slash socialist um, uh, approach to things, which I think goes way too far. I uh, I think that that uh, that yes, you do have have to have some controls. You have to have rules to the game, but those rules should not interfere with with a person's right to take care of themselves as long as they don't hurt other people. And I suppose that's where we fall on the political spectrum. Or at least I do. Oh, lefty, the red scrambled jewel crab tubes. Oh, lefty, the red scrambled jewel crab tubes. Oh, lefty, the red scrambled jewel crab tubes. Born on the 4th of July. So what the hell is this? Uh, this, this is, uh, I started out measuring the growth of my daughter and, uh, you know, I, I, just, I wanted to fill up the board with more than uh, just just her little lines for mm -hmm. her growth height. So I form just a community. Yeah. So, on your so, wall. Yeah. So I just put anybody up there. Wow. Uh, so there's somebody's lipstick, and mm -hmm. there's and that, Carmen. Carmen. Oh, that's your daughter, that's right? That's the daughter. Wow, she's tall. Yeah. No, so she started yeah. down here and grew up to there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Gosh. Bart there. Just yeah, there's oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Here's old B up there. Chemical glory. I won't block out the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there, that B. serves my secret identity. Mm. So, well, the, you know, the, there's the whole God thing, of course, but, but then there's also, you know, the, the idea that, that aliens created the Earth. Um, we take out the box of cereal to uh, be the, the, the thing that you draw. On. The level, so yeah, to speak. Yeah, so you put this side up against the wall and this side. Mm -hmm. Rests on the subject's head. Oh, okay. So I'll put Christy over here on a totally clear place. <laughs> okay. Okay. On a clear place. Oh, I hope on there's, there's one line there already. Day. All right, is she Which standing up straight? Bit, okay, there we go. We have, we have the connection made on the head, mm -hmm. on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Now she can walk away. Then we take this and we draw a line. There it is right there. And there it is. Now you have to sign it. She's She's making her too. mark. Wow, congratulations. Like another tall person. Beautiful. Beautiful. You're immortalized on the wall. X Y. How, now, what does that mean? X. Well, that stands for Christ. Okay, my name is C H I S T Y. Why? Christ plus Y. Why? Because she questions the validity of Christianity. Well, not really, Mom. <laughs>
about two weeks ago, I started putting my hair back in a UP. A UP. What's mm -hmm. a U? What the hell is a UP? It stands for unnecessary ponytail. It really is unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, at least even, we can check you more easily for lights and stuff. Have, I don't like it when guys have UPs. Yeah. George Washington had the classic UP. Stadium to see the fireworks at hallowed Bloomington tradition. We're filled with expectation. It'll be wonderful, marvelous. Uh, fireworks in a small town, it's one of those things that makes small town living wonderful. We're just so ecstatic to be living in Bloomington and we're gonna walk over and meet up with our, our community friends and our comrades and small town living and see some fireworks. Wow. And with also my Oh you're cleavage. Oh you're cle oh ooh, huh. Mm. I thought that uh, on Ooh, this Fourth of uh, July, I would I would celebrate the the, the okay, um, okay, kind of yeah. belabored uh, cafeteria workers of of our country, just because they seem to be at the foundation of of corporate America. You know, they're the people who um, work in the cafeterias. <laughs> God damn! Look at that thing. It's glistening. It's sugary. Glistening. With I'm wow. gonna eat the whole thing. <sighs> But then there's also, you know, the the idea that that aliens created the Earth. My name's Chris Boos. <laughs> Excuse me, Kelly. Mine are much better than yours. Thank you. Note how mine are painted all the way. Yours are starting to chip. Get out. Here comes a car. <laughs> Obviously, your chair knows the way. Chris ah! in front of the car. Oh, uh, wait a second. Andrew, stop. <laughs> She didn't think that was art. She thought it was annoying. Shave it. All right, rev her up, girl. It's a hot day here in the summer, and there's only one thing to do is just shave off all your hair. He's got a little zit here that I can't wait to pop now that it's been uncovered. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one of the private details of our life, which we're not going to share with you. But then there's also, you know, the, the idea that, that aliens created the earth um, as as put forward by the uh, the Mormons of course now you know a little more about this you were seeing a you watched a film about it right plan 10 from outer space actually yeah. doesn't have anything to do with plan 9 from outer space it's just, just kind of a play on funny yeah. play on words but uh, but I highly recommend it yeah good uh, movie it's kind of hard to tell where fiction and fact begin uh, I mean you know it's, it's a fictional film mm -hmm. but it has incorporates a lot of real elements from the Mormon yeah. church and stuff into it and the confusing thing, of course, when you're watching is to try to determine, okay, well, how much of this is real and how much isn't. But uh, if you view it, you might think some of the, some of the really wacky stuff that's mm -hmm. in there, I know for a personal fact, is real. Like what? Like, for example, the idea that God came from the planet Kolob. Uh-huh. Right? So God is, in fact, a space alien. And, or the idea that, that a good Mormon, mm -hmm. a person who is rewarded most highly in the afterlife, goes into the highest realm of heaven, for, mm -hmm. in other words. Um, such a person is rewarded with getting their own planet, which they're then able to uh, populate with their own children. Well, it's like Star Trek. And, it, and recreate what God, what our God, did to this planet, right? Okay. If you see what I'm saying. Sure. That's, that's the whole... So in other words, you get to be God. You get to become your own God of your own planet, have multiple celestial wives, uh, who will be, you will turn, keep on internally Wait, what about women? They get to be wives. Oh, okay. So it's kind of, they don't get quite the, quite the, um, the spoils then, huh? Well, I mean, they get to be eternally pregnant and give birth to whole races of uh, spirit children who will then be born into fleshly bodies on now, this new this, planet. this just sounds absurd. And this is what the Mormons believe? Yeah, and, and, it's, uh, and it's something that, uh, you know, they don't advertise. But hey, you know, I mean, let's face it, the Mormons, if you want to make fun of people, fun of religious people, the Mormons are easy, an easy target. And, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you know, there's a lot of good, good people, yeah. a lot of good Mormon people. I used to uh, be in a band, actually, and the drummer was a Mormon, mm -hmm. the Submersibles. Oh, okay. Put a snippet of their music in right here. Yeah. So that was the uh, Submersibles with some associated video that, yeah. Um, but the drums there, those kick-ass, that kick-ass drum, uh, 
that you heard? Yeah. Or I didn't hear. Well, yeah, I'll hear it later. Whatever. Uh, that guy was a Mormon. Yeah. So don't you forget it. And eventually he left the band because of religious differences. With, really? With, so what was your religion? My lyrics. Well, I would describe what do you myself believe as... is the foundation of history? Do I sound really strange and like in your face? <laughs> yeah, you sound very in your face. <laughs> Great, you know, that's such a, a nice, a nice little sign, a nice, you know, sign for self-esteem. Why don't they just say, I got hideously fat from eating a lot of ice cream. In an ice cream store? Yeah, yeah, why don't they reinforce the guilty feeling as you're attempting to make a purchase to make you feel good? Wow! Look at this, we've, we've come on this little island in the street, sort of a, a pedestrian's paradise here. But, you know, you're, you're walking a campus, you're just walking around, and then you can come to this little reservoir, this nature reservoir, which is free, by the way. I mean, look at the government. You've got to respect them. They gave us a little piece of nature for free. Look at it. You're still surrounded by, by the urban life, you know, but, you know, it's, it's, it's your space for that moment. Look, so it's shaped like a bell that makes you feel kind of good, you know? Not re I don't know, I don't understand the bell. But anyway, um, here's something right here, the sign that lets everyone know the pedestrian is here. As they martyr themselves by walking, these are the remains of those that have lost, lost their lives due to walking instead of driving. A car needlessly mowed them down. Gross, look, they're really, see right now it's really hot outside, so they're, I'm able to, you know, make my own thumbprint, which is, you know, fun for the whole family. Look, woo, mom, remember when I did that? 87, look at that. Ew. Well, anyway, so much for the great, Memorial. Yeah, why don't they reinforce the guilty feeling? The boy and girl so happy because she's not a big fat cow from eating too much ice cream. What you got going here? This is a really nasty, gross, yucky, disgusting wart. Look, check this wow. out. Wow, I've never seen anything Look, like it. Oh, all gross and it's coming off. <laughs> what is the deal? Well, you see, um, I put some fake compound W stuff on it and uh -huh. it's eating it up like like a little a little alien. Wow. Is that oh, the sorry. kind of wart that gets oh, stuck? Just knocked it off. Like gets stuck on your locker and gets stuck like on, you know, like gets slammed in the door because it's like in an inconvenient um, place. Yeah, it's, yeah. In uh, fact, I've zipped this up in my pants several times. Oh, oh dear. So there you are, just trying to take care of bodily functions. Yeah. That yeah. dude gets in the way every time. Yeah, and he's all black because uh, he was starting to kind of shrivel up, so I started picking at him. That's why he's all red now and uh -huh. bloody, because I've been picking at him, and he's been, he wants to get off, he wants to break free. Yeah, he free himself from the confines of, of your, own, your humanly body. Exactly. He See wants that to be stupid? on his own. He's ready to move on now. Wow, wow. He's ready to leave mama Liberate the wards. See, that's why I'm against the mandatory seatbelt law. <laughs> I mean, that's why that sucker's on there. See, it's... Right, Congress today, huh? <laughs> Amen. And that's how I feel about today's political movement. God, look how short she is. Release forms are important things, and when you've interviewed somebody, it's important to ask them to sign this uh, another one of these stupid forms. So, I'd like to uh, stick this under your noses and have you guys take a look. I mean, at even it. though you just interviewed them about warts and the yeah, like, it's still important. It's like wearing a condom these days. Don't only, the depend only... on condom. <laughs> my name? Your name. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, your name. Or pseudonym. What is my name? Hey. Got some good bleach work in here. Oh. Wow, Jay, your bleach is effective. So did you see the problem that Jay had with the bleach on his jeans? That's what happens when you try to clean things up. When you try to get rid of the grime and the grit of real life. You can see that he's learned his lesson. Look at him there, sorting laundry with such a dour, dour look on his face. It's sad, isn't it?
that's the toll that drugs take on a young man's mind. God damn it, look what I did. I ruined my fucking favorite pair of blue jeans. I won't tell you what brand they are because that would be some kind of endorsement. Look at this. I bleached them, but unfortunately the bleach sat on them too long and, and ruined the color. Bart says it's okay, but frankly to me it just looks like the 1980s and Rush and, and, uh, and the Thompson twins and are shit. And I'm just not interested in that kind of look. I've matured. I've grown older. I'm, I'm into like beautiful uh, print t-shirts now. The 80s are coming back though, Jay, so you could just be retro and still in style. Yeah, well, I don't go for those retro styles. I like to stay on the cutting edge of new technology. Oh yeah, then why don't you have a better video camera? <laughs> Ah, laundry's done. You know, I just want to let you know that these are my girlfriend's shorts, and just touching them makes me excited because they're my favorite shorts that she wears. They really fit her well, and it always turns me on when she's wearing them, so. Thought I'd share that special thought and moment with you. Um, I won't, however, show you Yeah, she sure does wear those often. Woo! Yeah. You know, my fiance, Jenny, um, whom you might have met somewhere else, um, criticizes me all the time for whenever we go do our laundry together for my anal folding techniques. She thinks that I'm really anal the way that I fold my clothes. But I just don't understand. I mean, I just do it the right way, and she does it the wrong way. I mean, what's the big deal? Um, it's, it's not something that we need to have some kind of major conflict over. It's just one of the facts of life. And I, I don't think that I'm very anal in the way that I fold everything. I don't know what her deal is. Goodness, the weather, she's a changing. Hey, yeah, it's kind of nice. Um, yeah, it's cooler, but when it rains. So, any last thoughts? What about this philosophical journey that you've had? Um, my clothes are clean, and my soul's a little cleaner, you know? I thought about what I've been up to the last couple years, and Maybe I haven't always been such a nice person at times, and damn it, I'm gonna change. No, I didn't think about anything. Else. What philosophical fucking journey? I don't remember that. Is that part of the script? I don't remember that. Who wrote that in? What came before, and what's gonna come next? It's like, it's all linked together, but it makes no sense except that there's a link. No sense at all. Yeah. That is the essence of Ragnaroks. God, are those people down there? Yeah. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Oh, God, no that looks like way. popcorn. It's like, Joe Nipple eats the world's largest <laughs> mouth <laughs> Or like it's like I have my arm on some kind of table here, and these are just like toy soldiers on the yeah. table. Yeah. There's like yeah, but the yeah. stuff's below. a thousand people down there right now. That's Eight a little miniature. You're, you're sitting like, look at my million. knuckles. If you can imagine my knuckles yeah, no. just sitting on the, the people in the crowd. Your knuckles are as big as the people. Yeah, the people in the knuckles crowd bigger than knuckles. the people. I really, the giant. And they are pebbles. Why is the crowd like that? <laughs> the, the, that crowd is pebbles, man. That's oh. you know what? That's, that's, the that's the not the crowd. That's what that's I thought. That's the ledge. Isn't that, that funny? I mean, oh, wow, good, because there's no way that was people, is it? Yeah, that was the other thing that we, just, all wore we were silver, talking about. They all wore foil on their heads that day. <laughs> <laughs> they all Wrong. wore, it was sponsored by Orville Redbox, they all wore like pepper visors. So, pepper so point up there to the crowd and, and talk about how small the people are, or in the, uh, the, the people who aren't really people. Yeah, well, okay, so like these people, if you could imagine that those people right there, are just like little toy soldiers on a table, and my knuckles are kind of resting on top of them. Um, and this is just like an edge to the table, and, and I've got my hand in this box, and I'm kind of fumbling with them. Um, and Joe just won the competition for eating the world's largest amount of popcorn. Yeah, and this is the front. Yeah. Okay, this is the front of the box. 
this is the, the this goes back into space, and then this is the other ledge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And these yeah. stripes. Now, Joe, in this picture, is so far up. J. J. In this picture, is so far up that it almost looks as, as if, if there's popcorn down in front of him, or just gravel or something. But those are actually the heads of all of the, the people in the crowds. Yeah. And yeah. They were all hired by Orville Redenbacher to yeah. come and dress as to popcorn. Come dress and the as popcorn. Indiana Farmers Union to represent popcorn. Popcorn is fun. Let's wear it on our heads. <laughs> yeah. 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 Actually, they they had what happened was the popcorn machines in the in the back over here um, actually just started like spontaneously like popping all this popcorn and it just like filled up the bottom of the stadium. Luckily, these people are up on the ledge, so they were saved. But but this is just like all, a bunch of people buried in popcorn. <laughs> That's how Joe responds when Bart sticks a corn cob up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think, don't know what that look is on my face. I have no I think, idea. I think he just swallowed it like a big bug, and it's just like, oh, no. what is he thinking? You know, bugs aren't as bad as they're... <laughs> I would pronounce that. You know, I was tripping at this point, so I just don't know if that was like some, <laughs> some just total... Does it look like there's just like a wave you in his look, cheek yeah. right you look there? like a lion. I think that I just said something to you that just has uh, per blown your mind. You just can't believe what wow. I've just said. I can't believe you just said that. There you go, yeah. wow. Probably because it's so dumb. Sure. Or maybe I'm farting. <laughs> <laughs> Going, woo. Oh, yeah.